Good evening, and thank you for joining us in our prayer time tonight. You know, there are so many things that are happening around the world, and a lot of people are troubled in a lot of different places. If you look at the table that I have here, you'll see that I have various things from Ukraine. We will be focusing on later on in our prayer concerning the country of the Ukraine. I have been there three times, and I've been gifted by some of these things which I have in front of you, plus many other things in our travels over there. But before we get started, why don't we just open in a word of prayer, and then we're going to read some scriptures and then talk about some of the things that are going on around the world. I hope that as you are connecting with us, that maybe you will at least wave or something so that we know that you're there and uh, we know that who we're praying together with. And I'd like to be able to greet you and uh, thank you for joining us in prayer. So we're going to pray now. Father, we just come and open up this time of prayer together. We ask that where two or three are gathered in your name, that your will would be done. And Lord, we're asking, O oh God, for the outpouring of your Holy Spirit. Thank you that we are not limited by rooms or by countries, but we can pray for one another because we're connected one with another through your body. And Jesus, we thank you for that. And we ask that tonight you would bring us together those who are going to pray with us as we pray about various things that are going on around the world. And so we give you thanks now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. We're going to look over at Psalm 86 just for a minute. One of the things that uh, I like to, to always understand a little bit more is the heart of David. David as a shepherd, and then David as a soldier, and then David as a king. He went through a variety of things where he tried to lead the people righteously before God. And when we come to Psalm 86, we are not going to read the whole thing. But there is times that David's heart was heavy for his own relationship with God. His heart was heavy for his family and their relationship with God. And then his heart was heavy for the people and the, the countries that were around about him. And so often David either meditated upon the word of God or prayed and asked God for strength. And Psalm 86 is one of those prayers. And we're going to read from verses 1 to 7 of kind of give us the foundation and some encouragement that as we pray, because I hope tonight that as we pray for the various countries that I have wrote down on my list here, that we will believe that prayer changes things. Amen? And so Psalm 86, starting at verse 1, it says, Bow down your ear, O Lord, hear me, for I am poor and needy. Preserve my life, for I am holy. You are my God. Save your servant who trusts in you. Be merciful to me, O Lord, for I cry to you all the day long. Rejoice, my soul, of your servant. For to you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. For you, Lord, are good and ready to forgive, and an abundance in mercy to all those who call upon you. Give ear, O Lord, to my prayer, and attend to the voice of my supplications. In the days of my trouble, I will call upon you, for you will answer me. Again, when David is praying this prayer, he prays a prayer asking for his own heart, asking that the Lord would find a place that he could forgive David for where he is and what he has done. And that he calls upon the Lord for an abundance of mercy so that the Lord would pour out his mercy upon David as king. 
when I think about these scriptures, I could not help that I felt that I too, this days, have been lifting up my soul, as it were, before the Lord. Troubled in various areas. You know, we have people who are dying of COVID still around the world. Even this week, we had another brother, a graduate of our Project Land School, who went home to be with the Lord. And then also yesterday, we had a, a teacher, uh, Reverend Winston Penner, from the Landmark area, go home and be with the Lord. And we know there's great rejoicing that when people cross over who are believers and come into the presence of God, but for those of us who are left behind, it's not always easy. As I reflected today on Pastor Winston Penner and his lovely wife, Viola, I think of the many, many years that we went down to Jamaica together and we started the schools. And one thing about Viola and Winston, they had such a great vision for discipleship training, for equipping people. And we were going down over a period of three years to equip people in various areas of their faith. And Winston was involved. He taught the book of Nehemiah concerning leadership, was one of the courses. He also taught a course on Old Testament survey and then New Testament survey. He took the time to research and to write and to get those courses ready. And he went down, him and Viola, faithfully for year after years after years, teaching many of the Jamaicans, plus teaching even in our local areas when we did schools around here. And so we deeply miss, you know, at this time now with Project Lambs, we've had several of our teachers over the last number of years that have gone home to be with the Lord. But we do want to take now at this time just to pray for Viola, for the children, uh, for the people of the landmark area, uh, for the people who knew him as a teacher in school, and that uh, their hearts would be encouraged and strengthened. And we're just grateful for the testimony that both him and his wife are leaving with us, but that what has Winston himself, through his teaching, through his, his, his deep hunger for the Word of God. And we will miss him dearly. So let's pray now for Brother Winston and his family. And uh, we know that Winston is in glory, praising the Lord today. All pain and suffering is over. But those of us that are left behind, we need to continue to pray for one another. So let's bring this prayer request before the Lord. Father, we pray for Viola now. We ask, O oh Lord, that as her friend, the Lord, her partner, that which whom she'd walked with for many years, faithfully as a, as a teacher's wife, but also as a pastor's wife, that you would minister to her and encourage to her, be an encouragement to her and to the children and to the grandchildren. We do look forward, Lord, to the day that we will all be together in heaven, but we thank you, Lord God, for the testimony. We thank you, Lord God, for Winston's life where he had poured into so many students that graduated and became deacons and elders and pastors and Sunday school teachers down in Jamaica. And we thank you for his zeal for your word. We ask, O oh Lord, that, that your presence would continue to be around Viola, around the family, the children and the grandchildren. Lord, that they would be strengthened by the testimony that he has left behind, not only for his family, but also for the community. And Lord, as the community will come together to say their final God goodbyes, that you would give them, Lord God, also the peace that passes all understanding. So we thank you, Lord God, that we can have this opportunity to pray for the uh, Winston and Viola Penner family, and we ask, O oh Lord, that you would just minister to them powerfully now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. We look forward to that day when we can gather together with our loved ones. Amen. 
Our next prayer request has to do with uh, what is going on in many of our uh, discipleship, both equipping and evangelistic outreaches around the world. And uh, we're going to, first of all, talk about Myanmar. We might do two or three countries at a time and then pray, and then do two or three more countries at a time and then pray, and then we will end up praying for Ukraine. So my on my list here is that I have, of course, Myanmar, where my wife is from, Kowin. And to know, I know right now there is, there is sadness of heart because of what has been going on in Ukraine. But in the country of Myanmar, our hearts have been constantly sad by the ruthless uh, government and military. And, well, I can't say government because it's not really an elected government. It's just a military who do not hold to any kind of constitution, but do things as they feel free and want to do. And so, you know, Cohen's country, the Kachin, especially, and many of the other believers and non-believers have suffered greatly through COVID and then because of the sickness and now suffer greatly because of the military regime trying to crack down on various people groups, you know, whether they're Karen or Karen-y, whether they're Chin or Shan, whether they're the Ketchin. There is many people groups that they have not only uh, tried to take all that they have, their lands, their, their fields, but also to take their crops and their animals, and then look, terrible things that they do to the men, women, and children, imprisoning them and killing them and doing terrible things. And you may not want to hear all that tonight, but that's what we need to hear, you know, that's going on in the country of Myanmar. And the thing is, that this has not just been the last year, you know, a year now in February. This has been going on for years. It can go back into the 80s and 90s and uh, the year 2000, 2010. This atrocity by this, this dark, evil government that has been doing things to these people. We need to be praying that God would show mercy even over the last couple years uh, because of covid and now because of the military, the, the church has not been able to be open for over two years. Uh, the public schools, the children who would go to school, you know, the schools have been closed for over two years. It's difficult to get medical help. I mean, it's hard. We had a week, uh, or I should say about in a period of three weeks, we had 16 friends of ours uh, pass away. And so it is not easy, but these are things that are going around, going on around the world. We also have the country of Nepal, where we have brothers and sisters that are uh, trying to get the gospel word out. They go out on motorcycles, they travel around, and we get reports from them almost weekly. And again, the atrocities, the things that the army does, the when they don't like something, they just imprison people. And many pastors have been imprisoned. Not any pastors that we know personally, but our, our friends and that who are connected with them, other pastors who are taking out David's song in their language, which they have translated, and are taking it all through the mountains and giving it to the people. Then we want to pray also for Pakistan. It's like if you almost go right across the top of Myanmar to Nepal and you continue on over the top of India into the place of Pakistan. Again, again there is great outreach. This week, the pastors have been meeting together to, to decide how they could begin to go forth with greater evangelism, no matter what the cost may be. Many of these countries, they can be imprisoned. They can be put into prison or even killed for, for sharing their faith. 
So these are countries that in Pakistan, again, the, the David song has been translated and they're using it to hand it out all over the place. Nepal, they're using it. In Myanmar, they're using David song plus many other books, that discipleship books, both in Kachin and Burmese. And so we want to pray for these countries now. Especially, you know, sometimes we don't know how to pray. We need to be praying that the Lord's will will be done. Because sometimes we don't know how else to pray. We know in these last days and years, whatever it may be, according to the Lord's will, there is going to be great challenges. Even the book of Revelation talks about the martyrs and the saints. And so right now we're going to stop and we're going to pray for uh, Myanmar, for Nepal, and for Pakistan. So I ask that you would join me in these three countries as we pray now. Again, if you're there with, with us and you're watching us, give us a thumbs up or a wave or whatever it may be. So we know where the Bible says of two or three gathered together in my name, it shall be done. So, Father, we bow our head before you and we come and ask you on behalf of the country of Myanmar. Lord, for the 50 years or more of persecution, uh, the onslaught of this uh, regime, uh, that Lord that only desires their own wealth and their own way and their own rules. And Father, we pray, O oh God, that as the darkness of the enemy has tried to overwhelm this country, we also thank you that there is a great move of people coming towards you. Because often when they are in darkness, that the only light they can see is you. And thank you, Lord, for how you have caused the Ketchin Church, the Karen Church, the Chin Church, many churches across Myanmar, even the, the Buddhist people are turning to you. We pray, O oh God, that you, by the power of your Holy Spirit, would, whether through dreams or whether through your word, uh, wherever they may find it, that they would come to know you, that there would be a great move of God. Even with the generals, even with the people that are holding other people in captivity, O oh God, by the power of your Holy Spirit, we ask that you would break those ropes, those cords, those chains that have been binding uh, people, and that the people that are binding them, O oh God, would have a change of heart. We pray also for our pastors and friends that we work together, that are discipling and going out week after week on motorcycles, sometimes even having motorcycle accidents, sometimes having breakdown, sometimes having days with no food. But Lord, they desire to get your word out. They desire to go from village to village to get people hope in you, O oh Lord Jesus. Father, I pray that even for those pastors that have been put in prison, and in jail, Lord, that they would not lose their hope, that they would be rejoicing like Paul, that they've been found worthy to even suffer a little bit for you, O Lord. And so, Father, we pray for those pastors in Nepal. We pray, O God, that you would strengthen them and encourage them. And then, Lord, we ask, O God, for Pakistan. Father, we thank you, Lord, that there's men and women that have met last week and this week, Lord, that are calling upon your name and are asking you, Lord, that you would show them the vision, give them the direction, Lord. They're willing to put down their lives and to go out and to across the country and to preach your word, no matter what it may cost. Father, we're living in a world where there's a lot of darkness that is coming forth. But thank you, Lord, we're also living in a world where your light is shining even in a greater way. Oh, Father, may your kingdom grow in Pakistan. May those pastors and ones that are that are, that are following you and, and are going out and doing evangelism and going out and doing discipleship training. Father, we ask that your Holy Spirit would be upon them in a unique and powerful way. Give them the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. And so, Lord, we lift up the country of Myanmar, the country of Nepal, the country of Pakistan. Thank you, Lord, that we can be connected together by the power of your Holy Spirit and just be with them now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now we're going to go on to a couple more countries here that we are also working in. And the country of India. Right now the, the, the government is of the Hindu faith and they've been persecuting the church of Jesus Christ over the last couple of years. 
they've been uh, throwing out uh, many of the Christian organizations that have helped people. But in spite of that, we've got pockets of people throughout India. And uh, I, I will not name the people, but people we contact with and work with. Uh, I can maybe give you the beginning of one name because her name is interesting. Her name is Angel. What an interesting name to have. And they're doing ministry both in evangelism, discipleship training, but also as many of them are, are, are doctors and nurses, they're trying to help the people. Each year they do crusades. I thank God that we, we've been there and we've been able to see again how the hand of the Lord how uh, the pastors have translated so many books and are handing them out. And they too, this weekend, will finish uh, the work on David's song and will be getting ready in the next week or so to begin to print it and hand it out into the villages and to go out into the communities around, around about. And then as you go up into another part of India, we got the place of Nagaland. We thank God that what's going on in Nagaland there. We are connected with uh, several Bible schools. We're connected with uh, a lot of different churches in that there. People who 25 years ago were headhunters and now are followers of Jesus Christ, have given their lives to Jesus Christ. And evangelism is going out there. It's interesting that it, even there, we've seen Bible information, the servant leadership. We've seen the I Am book, the Ruth book the David Songbook, are all going out into the villages and communities and the gospel of Jesus Christ. Matter of fact, today and tomorrow, one of the Bible schools is going to be going up and down the streets and handing out the booklets, tracts, gospel tracts, and handing out uh, the book of Ruth and uh, telling people about Jesus Christ. You know, people are becoming fearless in their faith, and we want to thank God for that. And then we also want to pray for another country that we have just begun to work with in Pakistan. And we're thankful. Bangladesh. Or Bangladesh, sorry. That's why I got my wife here. <laughs> and to help me out. But in Bangladesh, they will be soon printing, probably the end of this week, another 5,000 of David's song that they have translated. People are using this, this little booklet as a vessel to can you continue on. I've never seen such an outpouring of the body ministry of Jesus Christ. You know, I love it when the devil tries to rise up, the body of Christ rises up even more. Amen. And that's why I wanted us to pray tonight. And in Bangladesh, you know, they're working uh, uh, with people that are forgotten people up in the northern part of Bangladesh. Thousands of people have, have come to Christ. There's over uh, probably a thousand churches that have started. And we just thank God that we can connect with them. And they got vision that they can continue on to bring the gospel. And uh, it's other religious groups that are coming over and are giving their lives to Jesus Christ. So let's take time now to pray uh, for these three countries. Father... We ask you, Lord, right now that you will minister to the pastors and leaders in India, the number of them that we are connected with, like Angel and others, Lord, that you would be with the pastors, that you would guide them and direct them and give them an anointing of your word. We thank you, Lord, for Angel and for what you're doing through her team. We thank you, Lord, for the work that you're doing in Nagaland and how you're ministering to them and encouraging the pastors there and the Bible school students. And Lord, that these people are rising up, not in their own strength, but they're rising up in your strength. And God, we're praying together that you will minister to them and to the pastor in, in Bangladesh that's going to be doing the printing work. Lord, he's so excited about what is going to take place. And thank you, Lord, for using his life. And I ask, O oh Lord, that you would just guide these three countries in the depths of the valleys, of the depths, like, Lord, some of these people hardly even have enough money to buy food. But, Father, that they go out whenever they can to spread the good news of Jesus Christ, to go out and to read the Word of God, to go out and to preach the Word of God, 
to go out and to disciple people in Christ. Oh, Father, we just thank you for what you're doing there. And then, Lord, we just want to come to you and ask that the power of your Holy Spirit would be upon them, covering them over, protecting them, and keeping them safe. We pray this in your name, Jesus. Amen and amen. Then we want to pray for at least another couple countries. We want to pray for Africa in the, the country of Nigeria, also the country of Ghana, uh, countries that we're working with, the country of Kenya, the country of both uh, North and South Sudan. You know, we've been blessed by able to, this year, you know, people have been asking, have things have quietened down? Have things shut down? No, things for Project Lambs has exploded. We're in more countries helping them with evangelism and the discipleship. They just need words of encouragement. And so we want to pray, uh, first of all, for Nigeria, for Ezekiel, for the evangelist. He has an evangelistic spirit. He's going out and doing evangelism. They're doing uh, retreats. They're doing uh, weekend uh, evangelism outreach. They're planting churches. And he actually just had his birthday uh, this last week. And he is just full of the fire of God, him and his team. We thank you for thankful for Joseph and for what the Lord is doing amongst Joseph as he is, again, working with uh, the David song, the servant leadership, and like, like Ezekiel is. And just to get pictures week after week as the people go out and, and, and then take a few little photographs and put them back on the phone and send them back to us. Oh, our wall is becoming covered with pictures of the greatness and the blessings of God. And so as we pray for Ezekiel, we pray for Joseph, actually who lives in Winnipeg, who's working with people back in his country. As we pray for uh, the people in South Sudan that are undergoing great persecution, and we need to pray for Pastor Sunday and his team that is working there. We've been involved in sending discipleship materials there and also to Kenya. Oh, God has been so good. And so now as we lift up these countries, let's just bring them before in prayer. Amen. Will you join me in prayer for these pastors and these countries? I hope tonight that you're being encouraged that in the spite of what's going on, God is moving forward. God is touching people's hearts to rise up and to take a stand for Jesus Christ, no matter what the cost is. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for these African countries. We thank you for Ezekiel. We thank you for uh, Joseph. We thank you, Lord God, for uh, Sunday. And Lord, uh, many others who are working in the African countries under great persecution, where people, many of these countries, Lord, have IDP people, people who are being pushed out of their homes, being pushed out of their lands, and are having to flee to other countries. But thank you, Lord, that the gospel of Jesus Christ is continuing to go forth. And Lord, we ask, O oh Lord, that you would just minister to them and through them, and that, Lord, that they would find from you the strength, they would find from you the peace, Lord, that the grace and mercy would continue to empower them, and, Lord, that they would be lighthouses for you. We thank you, Lord, how the discipleship tools are going out. We thank you, Lord, how you're using them to do evangelism on the highways and byways. And so, Father, we just continue to lift them up before you and ask, O oh Lord, that your spirit would be poured forth in a powerful way tonight. And then, Lord, we just want to place ourselves in your hands and continue to pray for other countries, Lord. And we give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. I do want to pray for one more section before we go into uh, Ukraine itself and for parts of Europe. I want to pray also for Thailand. We have uh, many pastors and translators and printers and things that people that are working with us. We have our good friends, Ton and Cindy and uh, uh, Tom and I uh, forget Tom's wife's first name. Doesn't matter. <laughs> it just slipped my mind. 
We got so many countries that we're thinking about. And then we got Laos, Cambodia, Vietnam. And then it goes off into the Philippines and up around into Japan. Oh, there is many powerful things. And, but I want to pray now for tonight for specifically the pastors that we know that are doing evangelism, that are reaching out. You know, there is a great move of God in the central part of Thailand. Yeah. And, hmm? yeah. with, and also with El Purvis, too. Yes. <laughs> Again, there's so many in the central part, but also between the, the, the towards where the ocean is, El's more farther south. And then in the central part, there is a great move where, where hundreds and hundreds of people are coming to Christ. And we thank God that we've been able to provide discipleship material, provide a David song to them, and they're continuing to plant churches. Dozens and dozens of churches have been planted. You know, God is doing something unique. You know, Thailand and Myanmar and many of these countries are of the Buddhist faith. But people are coming to Christ. And we need to pray and season all this. You know, I would never have thought, if you had told me when I was younger, in my 18, 19 years of age, that I would be uh, networking together uh, in so many countries, uh, what in the area of evangelism and discipleship, I would have just smiled at you. But now, you know, I would just encourage you to pray for Colwyn and I as we are just so, some days, overwhelmed with all the networking that's going on. But God is doing something powerful in these last days. So let's pray for these countries. Father, we ask you, O Lord God, that you would be, again, with the pastors and leaders in Thailand, with Pastor L, with Pastor um, Ton, and Lord, the team there. Lord, the pastors in the central part of Thailand. Lord, that are doing a tremendous amount of church planting. Lord, then as we go over into Laos and Vietnam and Cambodia, uh, Lord, these are all communist-led countries uh, with, with regimes that are, that are keeping the people in bondage. But Father, I thank you that the Word of God is breaking through those walls of bondage. I thank you tonight that we, as we come together to pray the Lord God, that the walls of Satan, the gates of hell, are being pushed back. Lord, I pray that the kingdom of God will increase in these countries, O Lord. The Lord, that we know our brothers and sisters. Thank you, Lord, that they're going around from place to place with extreme uh, possibility of being imprisoned and even killed, Lord. But they're still rising up and proclaiming the good news of Jesus Christ, because it's the light of Christ who exposes and, and, and pushes back the darkness of the evil one. And so, Father, I pray that you would continue to cause your country to expand. And, Lord, that we come into agreement, even though we may be in various countries that are listening tonight, we come into agreement and ask, O oh Lord, that you would be with these pastors and leaders through various countries, we pray now in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Then I want to now just take a, one or two more uh, moments to talk about Ukraine. I have been to Ukraine uh, three times. Once with Irene, uh, two times with uh, Pastor Peter Brasky, and another time with Pastor uh, Peter Penner. And, or, well, I'm not sure if he's a pastor, pastor, but he's a teacher, and Peter Penner. And then we also know that a friend of mine, that just another pastor that just lives probably not even a mile from here, Ken Penner, has been over there. We have uh, people, missionaries there. We have our translator and, and orphanage uh, worker there, uh, Anya, who, who is emailing friends of ours and telling them, us that she's had to send her children away so that they could they could flee away from where they are and that she would stay back with the orphanage and the needs of the people wow it's 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 a challenge and that's why like some of these things i put on the, the table today is to re remind us of that what has god been doing 
I even brought a picture along, and I know it's a long ways away from you to see it. But I had a wonderful opportunity, Pastor Peter Penner and myself and, and, and others, we could go to this school in Zaporozhia and be able to teach there. And to now know that many of these students are now pastors. We've been able to go into communities and bring people glasses and dental work. And then to do evangelism at night. I remember many times that during the daytime we would do a, a service before people would start to get their medical attention. And I can remember a number of services where Irene would stand up and preach the people that have gathered together to get health care or to get food, whatever it is. And the opportunities that, uh, that the three pastors that we had each night as we went from community to community to community and preached and then during the daytime taught in the Bible school. These are just some of the students and they continue to produce students there and continue to send out People, I believe, there. And, I mean, we haven't been connected directly with them for the last few years, but others have. And we need to pray. We need to pray for this loving group of people. We need to pray also not only for them, but for many of them are also connected to the Russian people. You know, uh, I've got Russian families that are living on my street, right here in Marshan. We've got Ukrainian villages all around us. We've got the, the Mennonites who came out of this part of Ukraine. So many of us here, even in the Steinbach area, we have, we know of people over there that are suffering, that are going through hardships. But we also know that there's a lot of believers there. And maybe this is the time that it's going to take some of those people who aren't believers and help them to see that there is no hope in themselves. But the hope can only come through Jesus Christ. And they are very family oriented. You know, I, I think of these little, these little things that they make, you know. And you probably have all seen them, that you take them apart. But the whole idea was, is that they're families. You know, there's one inside another, inside another, inside another. And it just makes up the family. The bigger family. And, you know, I've been given some of these of gifts. And they're just amazing. One after another. But the, the idea was to show the connection. To show the connection that they are a family. And now families are being torn apart. And we need to pray for families, for the believers. Both in, in uh, I believe, in Russia. There is a lot of believers in Russia. The Pentecostal church is there. The Baptist church is there. And in Ukraine, you know, there is so many places that I've taught in Ukraine, out in the villages, baptizing people in rivers that were at one time illegal. But because of the freedom of the country, now they could baptize in rivers and not do it in the middle of the night, but do it in the daytime because freedom has come. But now the enemy wants to try to bring bondage back upon them. These evil governments around the world, that are trying to bind up people and bring bondage. And so I pray tonight that we will pray also for the country of Ukraine, even to know that the president himself, the heritage of the president, is that he has a Jewish background, and that there is thousands of Jewish people still in Ukraine. Oh Lord, we ask that you would just minister. And so let us pray. Let us gather together with those who are in our room and begin to lift up Crane tonight, to lift them up and ask that the power of the Holy Spirit would push back this darkness, that God's perfect will would be done in this country as in the surrounding European areas. Oh God, Lord, sometimes when we are going through struggles and trials like David would talk about, it draws people to praying. It draws people to fasting. It draws people back to your heart. Oh God, let it be so in this case now. So let's pray. Father, we just thank you, Lord Jesus, for the Ukrainian people. We ask, oh Lord, that as they are being pulled apart as families, as they're being scattered across the lands, oh God, that you will raise up a people to encourage them, to strengthen them. 
Father, that you would raise up the power of your Holy Spirit. Lord, to use them and to speak into them. Let your word become a light under their feet and a light under their path, we pray, O God. And Father, we ask, O God, that as we lift them up this night, O Lord, we don't know in Canada the terrors of, of war. And Lord, we thank you that you have kept us. But Lord, these things are spreading around the world as we pray tonight. There is so much uh, conflict and affliction that is coming upon people of the world. Lord, that because of their, their, their desire to walk in darkness instead of walking in the glorious light. Oh Lord, we pray that during this time that there would be a great outpouring of your Holy Spirit upon the country of Ukraine. And we pray the same, Lord, for the surrounding countries. Lord, that there would be an outpouring, that you would bring about wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. You would be with the leadership. And God, you would tell us, that, Lord God, that you raise leadership up and also you remove leadership. And so, Father, again, we pray that your perfect will would be done in the country of Ukraine. Lord, my heart is so heavy because, Lord, when I see the pictures on TV, I know those towns, I know those communities, I know those subways. Lord, I know some of the places that, 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 that they are hiding in, Lord. I've been there. And, Father, it tears at my heart as I know it tears at your heart. And so, Father, I just lift up the Ukrainian people before you as thousands around the world are lifting them up tonight. But, Lord, we also want to lift up all the surrounding countries. Lord, that the darkness that are in those countries, Lord, that you would redeem them and set them free from the, from the vials of these uh, satanic leadership that has come upon some of these countries. Oh, Father, that they would be released in the power of your Holy Spirit. Oh, Lord, you tell us whatever we bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever we loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. And, Father, I pray right now that there be a loosening of the power and the anointing of your Holy Spirit to move to and fro throughout this land, throughout the country, for all, even our own country of Canada. Lord, that you would move powerfully. Lord, that you would awaken the people that have gone to sleep. Oh, God, that you would cause them to arise. And, Lord, to bow the knee before our mighty King, to bow our knee before you, O God, and ask, O God, for your mercies, to ask, O God, for your grace would be outpoured. And, Father, that we would see truly, Lord, that you are the one who cares for us and loves us. And so, Father, we just place the country of Ukraine in your hand and ask, O Lord, that you would use them and move upon them. And as we pray for these countries day in and day out, O God, Thank you for that we've been able to connect, but also help us to realize that we are connected because of the body of Christ. Lord, because we are part of the body, and, and many of them are part of the body, there are brothers and sisters around the world. And Father, you tell us to pray one for another. And Lord, we do that now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Well, praise God. You know, there's so much to be praying about. But I want to just close tonight. I don't know how long we've been. We've almost been 45 minutes. Thank you again for joining us. I hope it's been an inspiration and encouragement to you. But I thought as I was wondering how to close, close our poem up together, I thought that probably a scripture that we all know, that we should all be willing to partake of and say, Yes, Lord. Use this in our lives today. Use it, Lord, in such a way that we can glorify your name. And so I want to go to Matthew chapter 6. I don't know if it's impossible or if it is possible. It is. I know it is. But I felt tonight we should say the Lord's Prayer together. We're not going to pray it at this moment because I just want to point out a couple things as I read it to you from Matthew chapter 6 starting at verse 9, where Jesus was trying to tell the disciples, when the disciples were asking, How should we pray, O Lord? And he said, Pray this prayer, Our Father in heaven, Lord, we're coming to you, who is our Father in heaven, and we howl thy name, we praise your name, O God. And Lord, we're praying that your kingdom come, and your will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. 
Oh, I'm praying every day, people. The only thing we can really pray is that Jesus will set the captive free and that Jesus would fulfill his perfect will in our lives this day. And that that's what we're praying. Oh, Lord, let thy will be done on earth as it is already established in heaven. Let your will be done on earth for Myanmar, for Pakistan, for Nepal, for India, Nagaland, uh, Bangladesh, Africa, uh, Laos, Cambodia, Vietnam, uh, Philippines, Japan, Lord. All these countries that we're connected with, we're praying that your will be done in the pastors, in the leaders, and the people that you are calling to your kingdom. Oh, Lord. Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Oh God, look after the needs of the people that are there. That are Lord, even one man said he hadn't eaten for three days. And Lord, he was so hungry. Oh God, provide for him. And forgive us our debt, Lord, where we have trespassed against you, where we have sinned against you. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from evil. From the evil one, oh God, deliver. Deliver your people from the evil one. Deliver them, oh Lord, we pray. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Forever and ever. For yours is the kingdom. For yours is the power forever and ever. Amen. So as we close our time in prayer right now, can we all say this together? Not to say it just as we are mumbling it on, but to say it that we mean it from our hearts, from the depth of our hearts, that we're praying this prayer, the prayer for the disciples. And I believe it's the prayer for the disciples all around the world, wherever you may be listening tonight, from wherever place you may be finding yourself, this is the prayer you can pray because it speaks to God and God hears it and God wants to fulfill his perfect will in you. God wants to fulfill his perfect will in your country. God wants to pour forth his love and his grace and his mercy to whoever will call upon his name. Amen. So let's just bow our heads and begin to pray this prayer. Amen. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil for thine is, or deliver us from the evil one for yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen and amen and amen. God bless you. Thank you for joining us. And if this is something that you feel we should do on a regular basis, just let me know through Messenger. I'd be glad to lead you in prayer for the countries around the world. If that's something that you feel that once a week we should be doing, I know you're already doing it. But if you feel like you like to connect with people from around the world, let me know. And thank you for connecting with us tonight. We love you. Keep on keeping on in Jesus. And know this, that around the world, the kingdom of God is expanding. The kingdom of heaven is expanding. The outpouring of the Holy Spirit is happening. Lives are being changed from the inside out. And we just need to be willing to stand up and continue to proclaim, no matter what the cost may be. And we're believing that our God shall reign ever forever. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for joining us tonight. And Lord willing, we hope to see you again tomorrow or another day. Amen. Bye-bye for now. Love you.